What's up guys, Jay here, and today we're going to be doing another tier list video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, uh, and I've been wanting to do another one for a while, and I haven't quite thought about a good one to do for a little while, but then somebody gave me the idea to do a grenade tier list, and I thought it would be kind of cool. Grenades are a very important part of builds entirely, as just as much as the weapons, and I figured it'd be fun to go through them and sort of give my thoughts about how they work, which ones I think are good, which ones I think are bad. So that's what we're going to be doing today. A bit of a disclaimer beforehand, though, grenades are very dependent on build. A lot of these are going to function very differently, better or worse, depending on what you are using, depending on what your primary weapons are, depending on what your secondary weapons are, what overclocks you're running, a lot of those types of things. So take what I say with a grain of salt and just understand that I'm going to be doing this based off of just my overall experience using these particular grenades and how I have used them in the past and how effective they are in my experiences so just keep that in mind but uh with all that said if you guys are ready let's go into the grenade tier list and see which ones are good and which ones are bad also don't forget to like comment and subscribe to never miss another tier list video or just any video in general so first up on the list we're going to start off strong with the scouts ifg grenades or inhibitor field generators so these are a very interesting type of grenade and it is the scouts default grenade so you get these right away uh the scout can hold six of these at a time i believe and these are a very interesting type of grenade in the sense that they don't actually deal damage per se the way that the ifgs work is they make this radius around them this big blue static field that encompasses any enemies that is inside of it and any enemy that is inside of it is slowed down significantly i believe it's like a 60 or 70 percent slow or something like that it's, it, it's a crazy crazy slowdown and they take 30 percent more damage from all sources so basically any amount of damage that you and your allies do to creatures that are affected by the ifgs is increased by 30 percent, which is great which is awesome the duration lasts for 15 seconds and it is a really really good tool to use to soften up swarms which is one thing that i really really like about it the ifgs are in my opinion a very very good grenade especially considering the fact that they are the scouts defaults they help slow down fast advancing swarms which i think is a really really good thing they can make big groups of slashers or sting tails or whatever that are coming at you a lot easier to deal with and they can also soften up bigger targets they can also soften up the praetorians oppressors dreadnoughts anything like that they can they can make it a little bit easier for you to take them out which is very very good the fact that they don't do any direct damage might be a bit of a weird thing to a lot of people and some people might not necessarily like that and i can understand that to an extent but in essence these things are doing an incredibly high amount of damage in the sense that they're making it so that way everything takes more damage so ultimately i would say i think i'm gonna put i think i'm gonna put the ifgs in immediately in the strong a tier they're really really good especially since again they are defaults which i i think it's probably one of the scouts best ideas i take these very very often if i'm running a new build that i don't typically know exactly what i want to do yet and also one thing i forgot to mention is that the ifgs for some reason they make it so that way enemies affected are treated as though they're electrified even though they are not electrocuted they don't actually get the electrocution status effect but they are counted as if they are electrocuted. So it helps a lot if you're running electrocution style builds, like if you're running Bullets of Mercy on the GK2, or you're just trying to just capitalize on your electric capabilities, these are a very, very good option for that. Then after that, we are going to the Driller's Impact Axes, another actually pretty uh, solid choice. And again, these are the Driller's Starter Throwables, so he has these directly from the get-go, which is really, really nice. Uh, he can carry, I believe, eight of these, if, that, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check that correctly. Yes, it's eight. He can carry eight of these at a time, which is a lot. This is, I think, the most that somebody can carry in terms of grenades. I believe the Scout's Stun Sweepers are the other ones that can carry eight at a time, but I'd have to double check that. And these function very differently than pretty much any other throwable in the game, uh, in the sense that they don't actually deal any sort of explosive damage or any type of... Uh, elemental damage like some of the other grenades do they do melee damage because it is a throwing axe you are literally throwing an axe at the enemy uh this is very interesting for a couple of reasons one because the axe does two types of damage it does the actual impact and then there's actually a little bit of an aoe there's a little bit of uh, area that comes out when it actually impacts the enemy which that does a decent that does a little bit of explosive damage uh it also does armor break damage which is really really nice but the big thing that this does is it just does very very high single target damage especially if you're hitting an enemy weak spot the fact that it does melee damage also means that it can proc things like vampire which is incredibly good especially on the driller and it means that they're also effective 
effective against the Ebonite Grunts if you do the Ebonite Mutation event that can appear sometimes. Uh, these can actually damage the Ebonite Glyphids, which is very, very good. Another cool thing about these is that if you happen to miss, if you don't hit your target and you hit the terrain or you hit the ground, you can actually pick them back up. They aren't consumed unless you actually hit a target, which is really, really good, which means they're very forgiving. Ultimately, these are these are another really, really good option. I think I would almost probably put these in S tier. At least for the, uh, for the Driller, I think these are probably an S tier grenade to use because they can fit so many different builds and applications. They have a very high, I believe it's a guaranteed stun chance, if I'm not mistaken, or at least it's a very, very high chance to stun. Yeah, it's a guaranteed percent. It's a guaranteed chance to stun with a 1.5 second duration for the stun. And that's really, really, really good. It means you can stun lock big enemies. You can take pressure off of your teammates. Or you can just straight up delete things that are problematic. If you shred armor off of something and then you just throw one of these, it's it's absolutely insane. So the impact axes are a phenomenal choice if you're running Driller. Next up, we have the Gunner's Cluster Grenades. The Cluster Grenades are interesting and they seem to be going out of order here. So forgive me if they're, they're not seem to be lining up. I'm just kind of going in the, uh, the order in which they're showing me. The Cluster Grenades are an interesting choice. They function a little bit differently than several other grenade types. These things don't explode directly what they do is when they burst they release these little tiny bomb mini things and they sort of spread out and fan out and explode in a big area around the impact area and those are what actually do the explosions and what actually do the damage and they actually do a pretty decent amount of damage they do i forget exactly the exact number but they do a decent amount of damage enough to clear out many small things and deal some pretty good chunk damage to the bigger enemies which i think is really really good they also have a chance to stun each individual bomb that gets shot out from the cluster grenades has a chance to stun, which is really nice. Uh, the gunner can also carry four of these, I forgot to mention, um, which is a little low compared to some of the other grenades that the other classes have access to. It's kind of a low number. Um, most of them hover around five or six. So this is a little bit low for a grenade chance, but I think the way they justify that is because you're technically throwing a lot of grenades at a time. The cluster grenades are okay. I like to use these when there's a lot of swarms. They're good for breaking up the smaller crowds and they are good for dealing heavy chunk damage. But the, really the biggest drawback is just the fact that you're carrying so little of them. They do a good job of clearing swarms, but there's just not a lot of them. If they upped the number of them that you held to five or six, or even just five in all honesty, these would probably be a lot better. But because there's just so little of them that you get to carry, it, they don't do quite as much work as I would want them to. So for right now, I'm probably going to put them in the... I'll probably put them in the B tier for right now. Like, they're not bad. They're actually... They're pretty good. They can do pretty good work at clearing up these smaller enemies. Against the bigger, tougher enemies, they don't quite do nearly as much, but they can still be effective. But it's just the fact that you don't have a whole lot of them to go around is the main reason why they're held back. But right, they're still good. So high B tier, I would say. Then sticking with the gunner, we have his tactical lid burster. Another unique grenade in the game because this doesn't again do any sort of explosives it's also not like the impact axes to where it does melee damage does a very unique thing where it actually does projectile bullet damage this is a tiny little almost like mini sentry gun i guess you could say that spins around and shoots bullets in a radius around it which is kind of interesting it's a very unique type of grenade uh it's one of my favorite grenades design wise because it's just so cool the gunner can carry four of these similar to the cluster grenades which is relatively low and the damage that these things do is kind of weird. It's kind of hard to calculate because, again, it's not explosive. It's piercing because it's bullet damage that you're firing. They do have a good amount of armor breaking capabilities. They have, I believe, 30% armor breaking, which is not bad. But this is, remember, that's per bullet that gets shot, which is really, really nice. They spin around four times. I believe they spin around four times and spray bullets at each spin, which is really, really nice. They have a very interesting effect because they are very good at clearing enemies that are weak to piercing damage. Uh, ultimately, these things are really, really good at clearing out against smaller groups of enemies. They can do good work against bigger threats, especially things like uh, detonators, for some reason, take a lot of damage from these things, and they're very, very good at uh, shredding them very quickly. And also, they are decently good at dealing with Praetorians and Oppressors, provided that you're able to hit their weak spot, provided that the bullets are actually able to hit their weak spot. Outside of that, they don't really do quite a whole, whole lot. Again, they are very good at taking out smaller groups of enemies, but again, because of the fact that you carry so little of them, it's kind of hard to use them effectively because you kind of want to keep holding on to them. So I'm going to put these probably probably in the lower B tier, just because, again, it's, it's the same issues that the Cluster Grenade has, 
except the damage type is a little bit different, but you're still only limited to a few grenades, which is kind of the biggest issue with them. Then next up, we have the HE grenade for the driller. This is the standard frag grenade that functions essentially like any other frag grenade that anybody has played. If anybody has played pretty much any other form of first person shooter ever, it's really simple to explain. You pull the pin, you throw it, it explodes after a couple seconds, it deals heavy area damage. And in that regard, it's pretty effective. Uh, the driller can carry six of these at a time, which is pretty good. He has a lot of these that he can throw out. They have about a two second time before they actually explode from when you pull the grenade out to when it actually explodes, about a two, two second window. And the longer you hold it, you can actually see like the little circle tick down to let you know when it's about to explode. So you can kind of gauge when you throw it. They deal 100% explosive damage, and they deal quite a bit of explosive damage, and they actually have a lot of armor breaking. They have 400% armor breaking, which is pretty good, and it allows you to shred armor relatively quickly. They also have a 100% chance to fear, so they can break up enemies, even the ones that they don't take out. So ultimately, these things are actually really effective at clearing big groups and taking chunks out of big enemies. Uh, in terms of being a basic standard grenade, they are pretty good. The only real thing about them is just that they're very basic. But again, that's not a bad thing, but it's just compared to everything else, they're not quite as enjoyable or as fancy. They're just grenades. Granted, they are very effective grenades. So with all that said, I think I'm going to put these, uh, I'll probably even put these above the cluster grenades in the high B tier, close to A tier. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what? I think I am going to move them up into the A tier. They're pretty good. They, they aren't going to they aren't going to do you wrong. They will be able to handle any objectives that you need. You can break up swarms with them. You can take chunks out of big enemies with them. They will they will work wonders for you. And then we have the pheromone canisters from the scout, which the pheromone canisters are pretty good. They're probably one of the better grenades in the game, at least in my personal opinion. The way that these work is they don't do damage directly similar to the IFG, but the IFG hinders and weakens the enemies. This does something a little bit different. What this does is it makes it so that we, the enemies will actually attack each other. It causes this effect that just causes enemies to just go crazy and then they just start attacking anything nearby, even if they're allies, which is incredibly useful, especially when the threats that you're up against are very, very big. The scout can only carry four of these, so similar to the cluster grenades and the lead bursters, you don't have a whole lot of them to go around, but I think that these will probably go further than the cluster and the lead bursters per grenade, at least in my experience, because the duration of the, I guess, frenzy or pheromone effect lasts 15 seconds. And it's it's incredibly effective at causing enemies to go berserk and basically take each other out. If you hit a group of, say, exploders with these, they will just blow up and take out like half of the swarm itself, which will in turn function as if it was a normal grenade, which is incredibly effective. But even if you hit a normal swarm that has a mixture of like runs, Praetorians, slashers, guards, and things like that, they will just be able to take themselves out incredibly quickly. The slashers will just be able to go through everything. Praetorians will be breathing acid on everything, and it's just, it's incredibly satisfying to just see them uh, all take each other out like that. So I'm probably going to put the pheromone grenades in the S tier because these are incredibly useful and very effective. But then again, they are low in quantity, so that's kind of the only thing that's holding them back. All right, we'll, 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 we'll bring them down to A tier. Pretty, pretty high A tier, but the fact that you can only carry a few of them does bring them back a little bit. And thinking about some of the scouts' later options, which we'll talk about in a little bit, they do do work, but they're not quite as universally effective at every single encounter as some of the other scouts' weapons. So next up, we have the Neurotoxin Grenade for the Driller. Now, the Neurotoxin Grenade is probably the first grenade that we're talking about today that I'm not super, super fond of for a couple of different reasons. So the way that this works is it works honestly similar to the pheromone grenades that we talked about in the sense that it releases a gas. The only difference is instead of causing them to attack each other, what this does is it basically infects them with a neurotoxin. It gives them a damage over time sort of poison effect. Specifically, it lasts for 30 seconds. It causes poison damage and it reduces their movement speed by, I think, 30%. It's pretty useful at sort of corralling enemies, but again, the driller can only carry 
for these. So it's not going to go quite as far as something like the pheromone grenades or even the cluster grenades that the uh, gunner has. The one thing that these grenades have going for them is the neurotoxin is flammable. It is able to burn, which is incredibly useful, especially with the driller who has a flamethrower, with the gunner who has his incendiary grenades, which we'll talk about later. Um, that is probably one of the biggest effects of these particular grenades is that they are almost like sleeper incendiary grenades because you can cause things to just light on fire which is really, really nice. Outside of that, though, I never really find myself using these grenades too much because the neurotoxin just doesn't do its damage fast enough, at least in my personal opinion, and it doesn't deal quite as much damage to take out the higher difficulty threats quick enough. It can take out grunts and swarmers, obviously, but once you get into things like guards, praetorians, it's just not doing a whole lot to take it out very quickly. So we're probably going to put these guys into the C tier, at least at the current moment. They're they're fine if you want to go for them. And, and again, depending on what your build is, these can probably work wonders. But just in my experience, they never really do anything super, super game-breaking to where I'm like, oh, I want to run the neurotoxin grenades, so... Moving on, we have the Scout's Voltaic Stun Sweepers, the Electro Boomerang, as I like to call them. These things are pretty interesting. They are the only other throwable that you can have eight of, similar to the Driller's Throwing Axes, making them tied for the most that you can actually carry, which is very, very nice. And the way that these work is that they essentially, they do like a pinball bounce in between different targets. And when they hit those targets, they deal electric damage, they stun, and they hit them with a damage over time buff, which is really, really nice. They can bounce nine times, I believe, either eight or nine times before they are done, before they are consumed. They have a 100% chance to stun. The stun lasts for a really good amount of time. And similar to the throwing axes, if they don't hit their targets, if they don't hit anything, they will come back to you and you can use them again. So if you say misjudge the distance that you're going to be throwing at an enemy, you throw it, it doesn't hit anything. It will actually, like a boomerang, it will come back to you and you will get it back. If it hits something and then it starts bouncing, you won't get it back. It'll consume it. But if you throw it and you don't hit anything, it'll come back to you and you'll get the charge back, which is really, really useful and very nice to have. Ultimately, these are probably the one grenade that I use the most with the scout with the exception of the cryo grenades which we'll get into a little bit later but they are very good crowd control weapons and again the fact that they apply electrocution can work very well with a lot of different enemies and a lot of different build setups as well so i think these are probably similar in the AT. I don't think they're quite as effective as the IFGs, and I think they're a little bit more effective than the AG grenades. I would say probably A tier is where they're going to go. These are very, very useful, very generically useful uh, throwables. The only problem is, is that these are the last throwables that the scout unlocks, so you have to play the scout a good amount of time before you unlock them. But once you get to that point, these things are fantastic, and I love using them. Which now brings us to the spring-loaded Ripper for the Driller, which this one, I have I have some strong thoughts about the Rippers. I like them in theory. I like the design of them in theory. I think they're pretty decent. But in terms of application, they just, they don't really do what they should be doing as a grenade. So the way that these work is they're basically like lawnmower blades that you release. You throw them and then they releases this set of saw blades that rolls around the that rolls onto the ground and just cuts enemies into pieces and the unique thing about these grenades is that they will follow whatever surface they land on so they will go up walls they will go on the ceiling they will wrap all the way around and they basically do this big loop sort of spiral type thing which can be useful but also just means that the bigger and more open the cave rooms are which is more often than not in a lot of cases you're not really going to get a whole lot of uses out of these particular grenades there are certain factors that can come into play for example if you make say a bunker and your team is huddling up in there and you decide to throw it carefully to where it spins around the entrance to the bunker and basically makes like a grinder for the bugs to go through or another a uh, popular thing you can do is to use these on escort missions. Since Doretta makes those tunnels for you and the bugs like to crawl down those tunnels, you can just throw this to the to where it will go around the, the tunnel that it creates and it's relatively effective. Outside of those couple of instances, I don't really find myself using these things too much. Also, more often than not, they hit your allies more often than not, which they don't do a whole lot of friendly fire damage, but at the higher difficulty levels, it's not really going to matter too much. Um, that being said, I I think, hey. the, I think the driller has some better options. I think the HE grenade, I think the throwing axes are a lot better in my personal opinion. It's, they can 
can work. They can be very situationally good, but I just, I, I can't really find myself using them too much, unfortunately. My apologies to the drillers out there who love to main the Ripper. If you want to main it, go for it and more power to you. It's just personally, I, I, I can never find the right time to use it. And then coming off of that, we have the Plasma Bursters for the Engineer. Now, the Plasma Bursters are fun. I like to use the Plasma Bursters a lot. And in the beginning, I didn't really like them that much. I thought they were kind of weird. But now that I kind of got the hang of them, they're a lot more effective than I gave them credit for. So the way that they work is... Engineer can also carry six of these, by the way. And the way that they work is you throw them and they cause a chain of explosions that travel in a line in the direction that the grenade was thrown in. So it's kind of like... It's good for taking out lines of enemies that are coming towards you. The explosion does a good amount of explosive damage. They apply fear. They have 50% armor breaking, which is really, really nice. And they have a pretty good distance that they travel before the explosions time out. I believe there's four explosions that happen before the grenade actually runs out. So these can be pretty good at breaking up groups of enemies and also dealing good damage to tougher foes. The fact that the engineer carries six of these is really, really nice. Um, it means that you can kind of be a little bit more liberal with them. You don't have to hold on to them too much. You can use them pretty regularly and not really feel like you're constantly running out. And they're just really, really good direct damage options for the engineer. In fact, in terms of grenades, I believe this is his only straightforward direct you deal damage with this grenade type of option because his other grenades, which we'll talk about later after this, are all very specific or very directed in certain ways to where they don't necessarily do direct damage. They have to do damage in a different way. So keep that in mind. In terms of effectiveness, I think that these are really, really good. Don't think that they're super anything to be to write home about on the surface, but I do think that they have a good amount of applications to them. So I'd probably put them in high B tier. Like you can bring them. Ultimately, I would probably bring the other grenades over this for the engineer, but they can still do the job very, very well. They can still do direct damage. The only thing is, is that the other grenades that the engineer has access to have a little bit more utility around them, which is very very tempting to use. So that's the only real reason why I would bring anything else over the plasma bursters. And sticking with the engineer, which it looks like we're going to be doing that for the next couple of grenades, we have his lore grenades. Uh, these are the default grenades that the engineer starts off with. He can carry four of them. And these function very, <laughs> they function very uniquely compared to every other grenade in the game. They don't do damage. And instead, what they do is they're basically a distraction. What happens is, is when you throw these, they unfold and it makes a holographic dwarf that does some very interesting dance moves. And basically, its goal is to distract the bugs and take their attention off of you and your team which is very 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 nice the main way that they do that is by dancing and then the enemies get drawn to it and they will attack the grenade and once it takes a certain amount of damage it will break and it will emit a shockwave that does a little bit of damage, which is really nice, but it's not going to do enough damage to really take anything out. I think it can take out swarmers, but I don't think it can take out anything bigger than that. And it can be pretty interesting in that regard, but for the most part, this is basically a distraction tool. Uh, that being said, it is a very useful distraction tool, and it can be useful on situations where you need the bug's attention to be off of your allies and onto something else. If they're attacking Doretta a whole lot and you want the attention to be off of her, this will help you out a lot. So with all that said, the lures are pretty useful. They're relatively universal, but they don't do damage directly or at least not a whole lot of damage directly. They kind of have a couple different niche situations. I would probably put these in the, mm, I'd probably put these in the B tier as well. Maybe like low B tier just because they don't do a whole lot of damage. So you could definitely still use them, but they don't have that same type of overall effectiveness that some of the other grenades have for the engineer. Which on that note, let's talk about the proximity mines. Now the proximity mines are another one of the engineer's grenade choices and they are pretty interesting. Uh, he can also carry only four of these similar to some of the other grenades that we've talked about. And they are really good for defensive strategies. The way that these work is basically you throw them onto the ground, they stick onto the ground or really any surface that they land on. And then after a couple seconds, they arm and then there's this big area around them that deal explosive damage whenever an enemy walks into its area. Now, the good thing about these is that they don't immediately consume themselves when they explode. They can actually explode several times before they run out. 
Uh, I think they're able to detonate three or four times before they actually run out, which is really good because you can set up a area pretty defensively and be confident that it's going to be protected for a long time if you have these. These are really good on things like escort missions, uh, sabotage missions, anything that you really need to use for defensive wise. And these are a good way to sort of fortify your position on top of the engineer's other fortification methods. Ultimately, I find myself using the proximity mines a pretty good amount. I bring them on probably half the missions. I bring the other half I bring the shredders which we'll talk about later and they can be a pretty good source of damage they do a really good amount of damage too they can take out swarms of enemies and they can even take out big groups of bigger enemies or at the very least soften them up a lot to where you're able to take them out very easily so we're probably gonna put the proximity mines in the honestly probably the high a tier Maybe like, maybe right behind the pheromone canisters because they're just so good at defending large amounts of space, especially considering the fact that, again, they don't explode unless there's enemies nearby. One thing I forgot to mention is that they will only blow up against enemies that are bigger than a swarmer. They will not blow up if swarmers enter the radius. There will only be anything bigger than that. So like grunts and up is what, it will, is what will trigger this thing, which is great, which means you're not going to waste these on smaller enemies. And ultimately, the proximity mines are very, very good tools, but not quite as good as the engineer's last option. Those being the shredder swarm grenades. And before we go any further, I am going to immediately put these up here because these are probably my personal favorite types of grenades to use in the entire game. Yes, I know I'm an engineer main. Yes, I know I'm an engineer shill. Yes, I know I'm a little bit biased with it, but these are just so useful and so fun to use. So the way that these work is basically these are like if you took those shredder drones that the rivals send towards you and pocketed them and put them into a grenade. Uh, the engineer can only carry four of them, so that's really the only drawback to these types of things. And when you throw them, they release five little shredder drones that will follow you and will stay alive for, I think it's like 40 seconds or 45 seconds, something ridiculous. They, they stay around for a while, or they will last until they deal as much damage as possible. And these things do so many crazy good things. They follow you around and they attack enemies for you. They don't deal explosive damage, but they do do armor breaking damage, which is really nice. And they just are really good at getting consistent damage off on enemies. They're able to take out smaller enemies very quickly and then chain from one to another. They can just all dogpile onto bigger enemies, which is really, really good. There's just so many different applications that the Shredders have that I just love using them on essentially any type of mission option that I get the chance to. And because of that, it just makes it so, so good to run these on pretty much anything that like it's hard for me to justify not bringing these it's either these or the proximity mines that i bring occasionally i'll do the plasma bursters and the lures when i'm trying to be fun but for the most part the shredders are just absolutely insane and i love using them so so much so these are probably by far the best of the engineer choices at least in my opinion now going from that we have the sticky grenade for the gunner now the sticky grenade is the starter grenade for the gunner so you have this one right away which is really really nice and the way that this works is it's pretty straightforward if you throw it and it hits an enemy it will stick to said enemy and then blow up after a short period of time it's pretty self-explanatory uh the gunner can carry six of these which is very very nice uh a good solid number they deal basically two types of damage they deal the actual direct hit explosion and then they do the aoe explosion both of which are really really high amounts of damage they're really really good they also do fear factor when they explode on an enemy which is really nice it stops them from attacking you and ultimately these are just really really good tools for breaking up enemies because although yes they do stick onto enemies they still explode for a very high radius which means that you could still use them to break up smaller groups they can deal very good damage to single targets they can shred praetorians very well they can do decent damage to dreadnoughts there's a lot of different applications for the sticky grenades, and as such, I would probably say they are probably the gunner's best choice in terms of grenade options because they are very universal. They have a lot of different options. It's kind of hard to miss with them. You can't really mess up throwing them unless you purposely do because, again, they stick to the target. So ultimately, there's a lot of different ways that you can use sticky grenades, which are very, very useful, pretty much no matter any way you slice it. And sticking with the gunner, we have his incendiary grenades, which are all about burning things if you haven't been able, if you haven't uh, assumed that. Uh, the incendiary grenades are probably the most 
fun option, at least in my opinion, for the gunner. Are they the most effective? That's left to you to decide. Uh, the gunner can carry four of them, so relatively low. And the way that these work is they basically just do fire damage. They blanket an area with fire. They can cover a decent amount of distance and they deal damage over time. They light enemies on fire and enemies will not want to run into the fire. Instead, they will try to go around the fire, which is very, very useful if you're trying to sort of cordon off or or deny them access to an area and you don't want them to get there anytime soon. The fire damage is useful. It can obviously take out smaller enemies very quickly and bigger enemies the fact that it's able to go through armor is very nice but because those enemies just have a lot of health it's not super effective against those bigger tougher enemies it's good for softening them up and especially again since it goes through their armor it's really effective in terms of just taking them out it's not going to do a whole lot for you so these are probably best suited for more smaller group control and things of that nature it's kind of hard to justify using these things because the cluster grenades at least in my opinion do a similar job that the these things do but direct and more straightforward and there's also significantly less friendly fire with those types of grenades so i'm probably gonna put the incendiaries maybe like high c tier low b tier they're fine they're good especially if you're running some sort of like elemental or incendiary based build and if you're just trying to do area control these will definitely do you well it's just in my personal experience, the cluster grenades do a much more straightforward job at clearing swarms, and the sticky grenades do a much better job at taking out those bigger, tougher enemies, which the incendiary grenade doesn't do very well against, so... And with that, we have reached the last and definitely not least grenade out of the entire bunch, which is the Scout's Cryo Grenades. Scout's Cryo Grenades are insanely, insanely good. Scout can carry four of them, uh, so on the lower side, but these things are just insane. They deal cold damage, and they will essentially freeze most enemies in one throw. You might have to use two of them to take out oppressors, but these things will basically freeze anything that touches them. And freezing an enemy, as you guys know, is incredibly effective in this game because frozen enemies take three times the amount of damage and they will just shatter pretty much instantly. This thing will turn most enemies brittle. Even tougher enemies will fall in several seconds. They knock out Mactera out of the sky because anything that's flying, if it's frozen, will just fall immediately and just die. These things are insane. These things are probably the S tier for the scouts grenades, at least in my personal opinion opinion and these things do an insane amount of work they are incredibly useful i run these all the time if i'm running anything that i know has mac terra swarm or it's just going to have a lot of enemies that are going to be problematic uh they're good for praetorians they're good for oppressors they're good for so many different uses and as such i think they are probably the scout's best grenade option the, the pheromone caster does come close but the fact that these just soften up enemies so much to you to the point where they just die in one second, it's just absolutely insane. And with that, we have the tier list for all the grenades in Deep Rock Galactic. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I didn't make anybody too angry. I apologize to the driller mains out there who love the Spring Loaded Ripper. It's fun, I will give you that, but it's just in my experience, it was not that super effective. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to see some of the other tier list videos I've done, uh, I'll have a link to the playlist down in the description, or you'll probably see it at the end of this video. I've done weapons, enemies, biomes. I believe I've done perks as well. And look forward to more tier lists in the future. I like doing these. These are very fun. These are very enjoyable, although I feel like I make a lot of people very upset when I make these kinds of videos, but hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from. And again, remember that a lot of this comes down to your build. A lot of these things can be significantly better, significantly worse, depending on what build you're running. So just experiment, use what you like. Really, this was just my experience. And if you are somebody who loves to run the Neurotoxin Grenade, absolutely go for it. It is, it is perfectly fine and no one is going to judge you for what you're running but in any event i hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyable if you did please be sure to give it a like comment and subscribe because it tells me what types of videos you guys like to see thank you guys for watching rock and stone miners and i will see you in the next video